Hello, this is the third instalment of my stinkhorn videos that I've been making. Uh, the first one, I don't know if you've watched them, but the first one, ever so briefly, was me and I were out in the, the woodland and we, we came across some stinkhorn mushrooms and we found a lot of witches' eggs. They, this is what they are before they actually turn into a mushroom. That would be sat in the ground and that's what they hatch from. Uh, that was the first video. The second one was me bringing four specimens home, varied sizes, and um, expressing that I'm going to hatch them, just let them do the thing, you know. Uh, I didn't know if they were going to hatch, I didn't know if they had to be kept in the ground, because there's like a little, like if you can see at the bottom, when you take them out of the ground, it's like a little, I suppose it's the part of the mycelium at the bottom, just like a little, little vein, a little root. I don't know if that needed to be in the ground to be constantly feeding it to let it mature. But when they get to this stage, this size, this one were even bigger, then no, they don't have to be connected to the mycelium. You can pick them out and they'll grow themselves. But this is two and a half weeks later. I'd more or less get up on them. I thought they're not going to hatch. And I put them behind the shed, just on some gravel, and just left them. Anyway, last week, one hatched and only a small one and the dog stood on it turned it into mush so that was a no-goer two days ago this one hatched and all the green goo has gone off it now the flies have done the thing they've landed on it it's attached to the spores i bet rain's washed it off as well um this one hatched only this morning so it went from an egg to this which is quite big in just a day and they can get a lot bigger than that three times that height, easy. Well, it's, it's been laid on its side, because like I say, I've just I've just stuck them behind the shed, and it's got no to prop it up. That, like I say, that would be sat on the ground, so that would be steady, and it would go straight up. Well, because it, has, it hasn't been sat on the ground, it's just fell to one side and grew that way. This one, I don't know if it's going to grow or not. It feels quite hard on the top, like there's something trying to burst its way out. But it looks all wrinkly, and the others didn't go like this. It looks all wrinkly and withered, like it's drying up. So, we'll see. It might, might come out, it might not. But the point is, they all grow at different rates. They all come out at different times, and they don't need to be in the natural environment to grow. So I found something out about them that I didn't know before, just experimenting. And they really are very strange things. We're going to have a closer look at them today. I'm going to get the camera right in, and we'll see how they uh, how they look they're, they're very spongy and porous too I mean this one's a bit old looks knackered and they, they smell terrible this stinks now I tell you now and yes I am going to wash my hands after so where's the camera there you, if you can see the porous surface of the stalk that's spongy look not very firm at all and these cavities here is where the, the green goo was, it's probably that holds it where it's uh, where it should be on the head so all the flies and that gather around and yeah it's all gone now as you see the other side it's just been where it's been laid on the floor it's gone a bit manky past its best like I say now this one is fresh so it's a good example to show you you can see it's that's nice and firm that is I could probably snap that it won't bend like the other one and wobble about but I'm going to take this cap off because normally they stick in the ground like that. I've never seen them with this, with the remaining part of the egg on top. So I don't know if that comes off later, or if because it's been laid on its side, it's it's stuck on or what. But I'm going to take it off now, so we can have a good look at that green gooey stuff. A bit of stone stuck to it. So let's have a, a look, shall we? Let's take it off. Yeah. There we go. What a monstrosity. That is really disgusting, isn't it? <laughs> you have a look underneath there. So that is the stuff that produces the smell. I can't describe the smell to you, really. It's ever so slightly sour. It, really, it clings to the nostrils. I'm sort of used to it now, because I've been messing about with stinkhorns a lot. Uh, a little bit like sulphur as well and rotting meat well flies love all that don't they so that's what attracts them I mean when I'll be out, when I 
got them from behind the shed um, just a few minutes ago. There are a swarm of flies all over these. So they, they do the job, that's, that's what they're supposed to be doing. Attracting flies and spreading the spores. Not sure why that's open on top there. Never seen that before. Thought it was supposed to be covered on top. Yeah, I'll do a bit of research on that later. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to prop that up and I'm going to see how big it's going to grow. And I might make another video on it. We'll see. So uh, I think I've covered everything. Yeah, that's it.